So, here is my project. In a fit of madness, I've gone and bought a, a written off car. It's a base model uh, Boxster. Uh, the ads, and you couldn't actually go and have a look at it because of COVID restrictions, but it looked like the thing had been completely submersed in water. Um, and so I thought, right, and I've always wanted to have something that I could just pull apart, learn about how everything pulls, puts together, uh, pull the engine apart, pull the gearbox apart, a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and as it turned out, when I've actually got this car, it looks as though it actually hasn't been submersed in water. It's just got a whole bunch of water inside the cabin. Because when I got the car, the roof was basically half open. The ignition, like the key, still had the ignition in it, uh, but you couldn't remove it. The battery was completely flat, and the yeah, advertising for the auction had it that had all these electrical faults and it actually went really cheaply because I'm assuming people thought like I did that it had been completely immersed in water and pretty much every control unit and everything was going to be toast. As it turns out I don't think it's just had some water in the bottom as you can see the bottom here I've actually removed the three control or there's the amplifier on the right hand side here the the rear BCM and something else on the left hand side they're completely ruined um, but everything else actually looks pretty good. Uh, if I look in the boot, I mean this thing's lived under a tree by the looks of it, but inside, mate, once you pull the liner out, it's as clean as a whistle and everything's dry, so all the ECM, uh, etc. is really, really good. This thing was just completely full of mould, it was just utterly disgusting. I've just The seats were just filthy as well as the steering wheel. The seats were the vinyl ones, so they're pretty toast, I might be able to recover those, we'll just see how we go. The steering wheel actually looks okay, it just needs a bit of a clean up and as you can see, just there's lots of gunk and stuff on the, on the controls. If they're going to work, I don't know, uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Because uh, basically what I needed to do before I put, put any power to it, is I removed the control units down here at the bottom which I knew were going to be absolutely ruined. And just so it didn't short out the whole car, I uh, got that wiring to the side and then I've, because the battery was completely toast, it's ruined. And then I just put my charger in power mode and just charged the thing up. The alarm went wild, but eventually it settled down. Gave me a whole bunch of warnings on the, the MFD that you know, it had system faults, etc. Obviously because I've removed a bunch of stuff. But I was actually able to get the key out, put it back in again, etc. Um, and everything actually seems to be pretty reasonable. The screen came on, the air conditioning, the, the actual controller... Uh, display came on so hopefully I'll actually be able to get a car out of this that might actually go we'll just have to wait and see so my aim to start off is as you can see these are full of water I'm going to strip this entire interior get the carpet out clean everything out so it's nice and dry and just take it from there and just have a bit of a project for the next year or two or ten we'll see how it goes Holy smoke, that bloody alarm is noisy. But there you go. I'm not sure, I think it's, it sort of flickers on and off because my charger just can't handle the amperage that it actually needs without a battery on it. But it's got 63,000 kilometers on it, which is next to nothing. Um, so hopefully the engine and gearbox and everything have been pretty good in shape. Well, I've just pulled both of the air filters and whilst they're obviously dirty as you would expect they are perfectly dry which is fantastic news because one of my big concerns about a car that had a lot of water in it was possibly that it had been driven into water and that it ingested water and clearly this hasn't been the case so that's great news basically the the engine should be you know pretty pretty good if you can't get open the the front boot or the front trunk whatever you want to call it and because you don't want to put power on it or for some reason you can't get access to it via the normal method of hot wiring via the, the fuse panel, then if you look under the trim here on, so this is the front left wheel, I've just removed the wheel arch trim. Uh, this here, this cable, that one actually connects to the, the front boot, so you just grab, give it a good target and it'll just pop straight open. To open the, the boot, so the rear trunk if you like, to actually, if you don't have power, what you can do is this is the wheel arch. I'll just take this back so you can see where I am. That's the right rear wheel. And this is the, the trim on the inside. If you remove that 
open up there and you can actually do it by just sitting or lying on the ground underneath the car and sort of wiggling your hands up there and then you pull this free and just underneath there is a little cable. Put a pair of multi-grips on it and give it a really good tug and that will pop open the, the rear trunk. So to get the car out of park so I can actually move the thing, this is the, the lever on the PDK here and that's actually out of park there when you actually push it back that's actually locked there so the wheels can't actually move this here is the actual lever that one there that connects to the the gear handle because i couldn't rem uh, move that with with no power on the car all you do is you get a sort of rivet removal tool sort of underneath here and then just pulls off that i'll just push that forward to show you that ball there and now with that removed the wheels will actually turn quite freely and i can actually move the car around one of the problems i had was that the the park brakes were locked on so without being able to get power onto the car and to be able to move it off a float and that sort of thing all i did was after i'd manually opened the rear boot in the back right here sits the park brake brake controller it just sits on a couple of m6 uh, studs there and there's a big plug and having a look at the wiring diagram uh, I can't remember the numbers here but if you look at it there the two ones there on the left on the bottom row and the second from the left and the third from the left they actually go to the the motors I think uh, I can't remember which side was which I think the bottom ones here were for the right and the top ones here for the left but all I did was just put a 12 volt battery on it and one way is obviously to put the park brake on the other is to take the park brake off and so you just put them on the battery and you'll just hear them either wind on or wind off and when they wind off they sort of wind off and then sort of freewheel really fast that's how you'll know whereas if you turn them on you'll hear that which is what you normally hear when you put the park brake on so you'll know which way it is but also obviously you'll be able to move the car but that was a simple way of getting the park brake off right so i've connected a battery from another car hooked it up um, the Instrument cluster has jumped to life, which is great. I'll put that in. Let's see what we get out of it. It's coming up with a system fault, whatever that is. Uh, this doesn't have the lever down here like mine because it's got the sports, the um, other steering wheel. That's fine. But what I'm going to do is I've pulled the fuel pump fuse on the other side. And so I'm just going to crank it over a couple of times. Hopefully the thing will actually turn over okay. Then I'm going to try and start it. Well, there you go. Obviously that lack of fuel has just made it stop there now. So let's... Sounds like it wants to start and we'll put the fuel pump fuse back in. Let's see if she goes. Give it a couple of moments to prime. Ah, sounds beautiful. Happy days. 